Okay, this problem is about the roots of the characteristic equation for a parallel RLC circuit. So we have these, these roots, uh, S1, S2, and from that we get alpha, uh, which is called the Nepper frequency, and omega zero, which is called the, the resonant natural frequency. And we can use those to determine whether, whether a parallel RLC circuit is overdamped, critically damped, or underdamped. So we have a, a parallel RLC circuit. There's a capacitance, there's an inductor, here's the resistance. And this is a 200 ohm resistor. This has a voltage signal across it, V, which is our signal of interest usually. There's a I sub R, all leaving node A. There's I sub R leaving node A, this is the current in the resistor. There's I sub I sub L, the current in the uh, inductor, and then there's I sub C, the current in the capacitor, and this is a 0 0.2 microfarad capacitor. This is a 50 millihenry inductor. Um, these guys are, uh, the capacitor and the inductor are initially energized by a energizing circuit, which is not shown. So the cap is going to have an initial voltage in it, V0, with this polarity. And the um, inductor is going to have an initial current in it, I0, with this direction. So v, the, the capacitor is energized, and, and we're most, we, char we um, characterize that energy with, in a cap with voltage. And the inductor is energized, and we characterize that energy with, with, uh, with current. So we want to find, um, we want to find what are the, the roots, S1 and S2. Okay, what, what, what is the damping given these? We're given an R, an R, an L, and a C value. And so from that we can determine what the damping is. We want to determine what if we change the, the resistance to 312.5 ohms. This is just some arbitrary number. And what would, what would, how would that affect the roots, S1 and S2? And then, Lastly, what would what is R for critical damping? All right. So this this problem is it's really just a review of playing with the math involved with these with these roots and kind of easing into these parallel RLC circuits. So we have a bunch of formulas for these roots that we can just use as tools. So one of those formulas is alpha is 1 over 2 RC. Okay, so alpha is 1 over 2. The, the uh, resistance is 200 ohms. The capacitance is um, 2 microfarad. The, uh, and that ends up being 1.25 times 10 to the fourth. And it has units of radians per second. So that's a frequency, right? Radians per second. Now, so Radians per second, that's an understandable unit. I mean, it's something hap how many of something happens per second, a frequency. But we're going to need alpha squared later, so um, this is, let's just square this value to get alpha squared, and that's going to be 1.56 times 10 to the 8. And that has units of radians squared per second squared. Now, just to point out that it has units, it's hard to understand what physically what radians squared per second squared means, but, uh, you know, there it is. So just to point out that sometimes it's good to look at units and think about the units, and sometimes the units are understandable, and other times they're so, there's so many things in the units that they're kind of not so understandable, but still kind of look at them. Anyway, so we have another formula for omega zero squared, and that's one over LC. All right, so that's uh, 1 over um, the um, inductance, which is 50 times 10 to the minus 3, or 50 millihenries, and then the capacitance is 0 0.2 microfarad. So this, this ends up being 1 times 10 to the 8th radians squared per second squared are the units, which is kind of a crazy unit again. But anyway, now we can get our S1 and S2 roots because we have a formula. S1 is minus alpha plus root alpha squared minus omega zero squared. 
So that ends up being um, so 1.25 times 10 to the fourth is is 12,500 um, negative plus root 12,500 squared minus uh, 10 to the eighth omega zero squared. So this this ends up being minus twelve thousand five hundred plus the stuff under the root here is seventy five hundred. So that ends up being minus five thousand radians per second. That's S one. Okay, S two is minus alpha minus root alpha squared minus omega zero squared. So it's going to be minus 12,500 minus 7,500, right? The only thing different between S1 and S2 is, is, this, is this sign here. So um, this ends up being uh, minus 20,000 radians per second. That's S2. So we can look at these numbers right now, even though we're not asked to, but we can look at them, and, and you can notice that these are real and distinct. They're, that is to say they're real numbers, and they're different so if they're real and distinct, we know that this circuit is overdamped. All right? So that's um, the answer to part B. But the other, the other way you can figure that is, so like this is part A. But the other way to, to figure whether something is overdamped and under, or underdamped or critically damped is to compare alpha squared and, uh, and omega zero squared. In this case, alpha, alpha squared is 1.5 times 10 to the eighth, and omega, omega zero squared is going to be, um, omega, zero to, omega zero squared is one times 10 to the eighth. So alpha squared is, is bigger than omega zero squared. That's also another way to tell that, that this thing is overdamped, which means that the voltage response and the voltage signal, the parallel, the voltage across all three parallel elements is, is going to take a long time to decay down to zero. Okay, that's part A and part B. So part C is the same thing, really. It's just calculating these roots and comparing them, but they give you a different R value. So... Um, so alpha is um, 1 over 2 RC. It's going to be 1 over 2. And now R is 312.5. 312.5 and C is 0 0.2 microfarad. It's going to be 8,000 radians per second. And um, alpha squared is going to be um, uh, this thing, this thing squared or 64. Um, you know, 64 times 10 to the 6 um, radians squared per second squared. Um, omega 0 is same as previous because omega 0 is 1 over LC and we haven't changed L or C. So omega 0 is same, same as previous. So we can calculate S1 now. It's going to be minus alpha plus root alpha squared minus omega zero squared. It's going to be minus 8,000 plus root 64 times 10 to the 6 minus 10 to the 8. Um, uh, it's going to be uh, minus 8,000 plus, okay, this, uh, you're here 10 to the 8 is bigger than 10 to the 6. So you're, uh, you, this is going to be a negative value here. So you're going to have a you're going to have a square root of minus one in there. Okay, so you end up with uh, a complex number. All right, radians per second. So that's um, S one and S two is going to be um, the only thing different is this plus sign becomes a negative sign. So it's going to be minus eight thousand minus J six thousand radians per second. All right, so this is this is S1 and S2 for a value of 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 um, this R value here and they're complex conjugates. Okay, so these are complex conjugates. 
and therefore this thing is going to be under damped which means that it'll it'll approach it'll approach zero um, wiggling like that and decaying and under kind of underneath an e curve okay it's under damped um, the other way to tell that something's under damped is compare alpha squared and omega zero squared and in this case alpha squared is 64 times 10 to 6 and omega zero squared is is um, 10 to the 8 so alpha alpha squared is less than omega zero squared which you know also means that it's that it's under damped all right then the last thing is um, part D is critical damping so you know under damped this is this is the condition for for under damped alpha squared is greater than omega zero zero squared and for for uh, oh, oh sorry that was for over damped omega squared is for is greater than omega zero squared so over damped under damped is is the other way around alpha squared is less than omega zero squared for critically damping you know goldilocks and the three bears uh, this one's too much this one's too little and this one's just right um, this is the condition these two are the same and we have formulas for alpha squared and omega zero squared and that's um, alpha squared is 1 over 2 rc squared and omega zero squared is 1 over lc and um, this we so 1 over lc we're not um, they're asking what is the r value for critical damping they're asking just to change the r value so um, the uh, L and C will, will stay the same. And we've already calculated that, that 1 over LC value. It's, it's, um, it's 10 to the, it's 1 times 10 to the 8th, or just 10 to the 8th. Okay, and so we, we just solve for, we just solve for R. So, you know, solve for R, a bunch of algebra, and you're going to get R is 250 ohms. So this would be this would be critically damping. It would bring this, bring the response, the voltage response, as a function of time, down to zero in the quickest way possible without bouncing. All right. So that's just a review of playing with the roots and comparing your know, real and distinct values, complex conjugate values, and um, real and uh, and and the same values or this condition here for for um, critical damping. Okay, pretty pretty easy problem, but worth worth going through.